Hello everyone. Here we talk about the chi-square test statistic and its application. Chi-square test statistics is from chi-square distribution, a standardized random variable of a random sample from a normally distributed population has chi-square distribution with degree freedom n minus one. This random variable is called chi-square random variable. N represents sample size as a square as a sample variance, and sigma square is population variance. Based on this fact, chi-square sampling distribution, we can construct a confidence interval with confidence level one minus alpha to estimate population variance sigma. It's like mathematical expression being rearranged. So this is confidence interval. Chi-square u is on the right side, called the upper chi-square critical value, and the chi-square l is on the left side, called the chi-square critical value. They can be conveniently figured out from chi-square. Statistical function in Excel. From this chi-square expression, we can see only positive values are possible for this chi-square random variable. Corresponding distribution curve shows in this chart. When we build up a confidence interval, the confidence interval would be around the center. Here's the one we just described. And showing where the lower chi-square critical value and upper chi-square critical value are located, they are around the center, and each tail assigned as a half of significance level. So in that case, the center part would be the confidence level one minus alpha. So we have this confidence interval being expressed by sample variance, sample size, and chi-square critical value. Some interesting facts about chi-square distribution: the chi-square distribution is right skewed and becomes broader when increasing degrees of freedom. We、we'll、have two example curves. Of chi-square random variable, degree freedom five and degree freedom nine. The interesting part is the mode for chi-square random variable is degree freedom minus two. From the curve, we can see the mode is the value with the highest frequency. So when we use a five minus two. We get a three. That is about the location of the peak of the curve. So that is the so-called mode. And similarly, the other one, the mode would be seven, is also about the peak. Chi-square random variable expected value is exactly the number of degree of freedom. This is another interesting fact. And it will be convenient in some kind of situation when we use chi-square test statistic to do test. We can imagine the test normally would be one-sided test. Occasionally, we can still do the two-sided test. Here is an example: a soft drink bottling company is considering buying a new fueling machine. Of great importance is the variation in the fuel volume produced by the machine. The company has selected a random sample of 20 cans fueled by the machine and calculated the sample variance to be 0.25. Based on this sample data, Develop 95% confidence interval estimate for the true population variance. So this question is about estimating the population variance. 
and we have all the information we need it. Sample size, sample variance, confidence level. We can come out a degree of freedom from sample size. Twenty minus one is nineteen. Then we can use the confidence level. Give us five percent significance level. Cut it in half. For each little tail, we give it two and a half percent. In that case, we figure out a lower chi-square critical value and upper chi-square critical value. Put all this information in the formula we have. We come out confidence interval for population variance would be between zero point one four four six. And 0.5333. Based on this chi-square distribution, we can use this chi-square random variable as a test statistic. By calculating the test statistic value from sample variance, and assume the population variance, sometimes we also call that from now hypothesis. We can make a conclusion for the hypothesis model about population variance below. Typically, we have all these three kind possible models: two-sided model, the first one, hypothesis model for population standard deviation equals to a specific value. Alternative hypothesis would be. Not equal to specific value, or we have two kind of one-sided hypothesis model. We only test the positive side, or we only test negative side. Whenever we have this kind of model, that means we assume the other side of the situation is not possible. That part is excluded. The testing logic, or setting up the reject region, here is the technique showing in the chart below. For left-sided testing model, our significance level would be shown in the left-side little tail. That little green tail would have the area alpha. That's our significance level. From there, we can identify. The chi-square critical value, and this chi-square critical value would identify our reject region. When the test statistic value calculated from sample data far away out left side from the center, we reject now hypothesis. Similarly, for the right side positive side data. Testing model, and we have significance level showing in the green area, which is located on the right side. And in that case, corresponding chi-square critical value being set the rejection region on the right side. If we are handling two-sided testing model, and then we simply split significance level alpha. Into two parts equally, half alpha on left side and the half alpha on right side. For those, we can identify two critical values, and that would set up the rejection region on the left side and on the right side. Here's an example: a restaurant is interested in controlling the time between. When the customer orders dinner, and when the dinner reaches the table, the manager has established a standard that says the standard deviation in service time can't exceed three minutes. To test the restaurant service, if meet this standard. A random sample of 15 customers is selected, and the service time is measured. The mean service time was 15 minutes. 
with a sample standard deviation equal to four minutes. Based on this data, perform the test using significance level 5%. According to the question background, our testing model would be the right-sided. We are testing if the service time variance or standard deviation is exceeding 3 minutes. The testing model can easily be written as variance situation. So corresponding converted model would be population variance equals 9 or population variance greater than 9. Our sample information with size 15, sample variance 4, and significant level 5%. In that case, we can calculate Degree freedom for teen, chi-square value 24.8889, and chi-square critical value 23.6848. Since our chi-square statistic value is bigger than critical value, in that case, we reject now hypothesis. That means we would accept or we would agree the service time standard deviation would be greater than 3 minutes. Another example, if we do two-tailed hypothesis by applying chi-square distribution, the company is experimenting with devices that can be used to store solar energy. Engineers have determined that one particular storage design will yield an average of 88 minutes per cell with a standard deviation of 6 minutes. They also made some modifications to the design and are interested in determining whether this change has impacted the standard deviation, either up or down. For that reason, a random sample of 12 individual storage cells containing the modified design have been used to test that result. So here's the sample data with size 12, sample variance 26.6, .6, and the significance level preset 5%. Based on all this information and the question background, clearly we are testing for the a modified design if the variance is 36 or if the standard deviation is 6. They are questioning if the modification made the variance up or down, clearly including both sides. We just want to know if some kind of difference happened. Degree freedom from sample size minus 1, give us 11. Calculate the chi-square, test the statistic value with all the information we needed, 8.1278. And then we can split 5% significance level to both sides by applying 2.5% significance level we find out the upper set chi-square critical value, 21.92, and the lower side chi-square critical value, 3.8157. Here's the chart showing the situation. Since we have chi-square test statistic value 8.1278, is located in between of these two critical values. In that case, we cannot reject now hypothesis. That means we cannot tell the modified design would have made difference on the virus. Chi-square test statistic for goodness of fit test. 
chi-square test statistic is also used as a goodness of fit test to find whether the actual data observed for a random variable fits a particular probability distribution. Chi-square random variable or chi-square test statistic is built up by calculating the difference between observed value and expected value. Here is the expression of the chi-square statistic. OI represents observed value from the sample. EI represents expected value from assumed probability distribution. K is the number of categories. There's a basic requirement for this kind of situation. Sample size should be large enough so that all the expected values should be bigger than 5. Categories should be combined to generate large enough expected category values if sample size can't be increased. Chi-square test statistic value helps us make a conclusion for the hypothesis about the distribution like this. Now hypothesis says random variable has the expected distribution. An alternative hypothesis is opposite. Random variable does not have the expected distribution. Here's an example. The city mass transportation manager believes that if everything is running as planned, the ridership should be equal during the Monday through Friday workdays and 25% less on Saturdays and Sundays. She wishes to test this based on sample production data below. So basically we want to know by using observed sample data to see if it falls in this kind of distribution. Equal ride shifts on every weekdays and 25% less on weekend days. Here are the observed ride shifts being recorded over a week. So total we have 56,000 ride shifts being observed. We are testing. Now hypothesis. Distribution is uniform over Monday to Friday workdays and 25% less on weekend days. Alternative hypothesis is opposite. Just deny the now hypothesis. With 5% significance level, we use this observation to see if the null hypothesis would be accepted. If the null hypothesis is true, for total five, for total 56,000 rise, how many rise would be expected on weekdays and weekend days? And we can calculate the value. That would be the expected rise. If we assume x rise on weekdays, then we're going to have 5x and 75% x on Saturday and Sunday. So total together would be 56,000 rise. Give us on weekdays from Monday to Friday, we would expect 8615.38 rise. And on weekends, we would expect 64, 61.54 rise. Put them together with observed rise and expected rise. From the definition of chi-square test statistic, we come out the value 3335.6. Since we have seven categories, the degree of freedom would be six, and the corresponding chi-square critical value would be 12.5916. Here's the chart shows rejection region on the right side little tail. 
since our chi-square test statistic value is far much bigger than critical value, we strongly reject null hypothesis. In that case, we mean we do not agree. From Monday to Friday would be the uniform distribution for the rise and 25% less on the weekend days. Here's another example. A company makes wood moldings, door frames, and window frames. First, they rip lumber in the smaller strips. The manufacturer of the saw claims that the rip saw cuts an average deviation of zero from target, and that the differences from target will be normally distributed, with a standard deviation of 0 0.01 inch. Company have recently become concerned that the rip saw may not be cutting to the manufacturer's specifications. A quality improvement team selected a random sample of 300 boards just as they came off the rip saw. We would like to know if the sample data meets the normal distribution claimed by the manufacturer. Here's what 300 boards have been observed. The difference from target being listed in six categories and they are organized into the frequency distribution. So we observe the zero strips has the difference to target less than minus 0.02. And the 42 strips has the difference from target between negative 0.02 inch and negative 0.01 inch, and so on. Total we have 300 observed differences from the target. And what we are trying to do here, by using this observed sample data to see if the population distribution follows normal distribution with center 0 and standard deviation 0 0.01. In other words, we are testing the hypothesis model. Now hypothesis, random variable x follows normal distribution 0 and 0 0.01. Alternative hypothesis, x doesn't has normal distribution like that. The question is, based on the normal distribution, what can we expect? For what we have observed, and we can find out how likely that kind of situation would happen. If the normal distribution is true, how much chance the difference of the strips would be less than negative 0.02 inch. We can find out from normal distribution. So our cutoff value is negative 0.02, mean 0, standard deviation 0.01, and the cumulative situation. So here we have. And similarly, we can find out the probability for next category. Here we go. With the Excel function, we can easily find out how much chance the difference of one strip would belong to each category. With all this probability, we can also find out, on average, how many strips their differences would be expected to be in each category. We can use uh, 300, multiply, each corresponding probability that would be expected counts in each category. Then we can calculate the square of the difference between observed frequency and expected frequency, and then divide by expected frequency. Have them all add together. This would be our chi-square value. Since we have six categories, the degree of freedom, five. In that case, we can find out p-value. Pick up the cutoff value and pick up degree of freedom. Here's our p-value. We can see the p-value is very small. So in that case, we have overwhelming evidence to reject now hypothesis. That means 
we do not believe this. We do not believe the strips has the differences to the target follow normal distribution as claimed. In that case, we would say that Ripsa is not working as what is expected. Chi-square test is also used for testing homogeneity or codependence. A material or image that is homogeneous is uniform in composition or character. For example, color, shape, size, weight, height, distribution, texture, language, income, disease, temperature, radioactivity, architectural design. They are all have same kind of character. If one material is distinctly non-uniform in one of these qualities, it is called heterogeneous. In the standard applications of chi-square test, the observations are classified into mutually exclusive classes. If the so-called null hypothesis is true, the test statistic computed from the observations follows a chi-square distribution. The purpose of the test is to evaluate how likely the observed frequencies would be assuming the null hypothesis is true. Chi-square test statistic value is applied to the data in contingency table to tell if the two variables in the contingency table are independent. Here's our hypothesis model. Now hypothesis says two variables are independent. Alternative hypothesis says two variables are not independent. Chi-square test statistic from a contingency analysis is expressed as below. It is a similar like the structure we just described. By calculating all the squares of the difference between observed frequency and expected frequency. Here's how expected frequency come from the data in the table. R represents number of the rows, C represents number of columns. The, the expected counts in the contingency table come from calculating the percentage of row total takes in the whole table total and then multiply each column total would give us each cell expected frequency. And here's the definition about the standardized residue. This kind of chi-square test statistic, or we say the random variable distribution, has the degrees of freedom come from number of the rows minus one multiply number of columns minus one. Here's an example. One question survey is about how important for people feel about their appearance. Or we say we try to find out how people consider their appearance by setting the importance level. Here we have seven levels being settled, and then we collect people's opinion. We have few different countries involved in, so people's opinion being counted. Importance level from 1 to 7. 7 means extremely important. For each country, we collect how many people consider the level 7, how many people consider the other levels. Similarly to the other country, here we have the contingency table. The question for this research is find out, do people's opinions seem to be relative to where they are? The data in this contingency table are the 
actual frequencies being observed, we can translate them to percentage for each separate country. And also, we can see in the last column, we have the overall situation for all the areas and how much percent people consider extremely important and how much percent people consider appearances not at all important. This gives us a chance by using that last row percentage, multiply each column total and give us expected frequencies for each country. With observed frequencies and expected frequencies, we can come out our chi-square test statistic value. Here we show you in Excel how the chi-square test statistic value is calculated. With the original observed frequency collected on top part of this table, and with the row totals and the column totals all calculated, based on the information collected, we have grand total 7,440 people's opinion received. And we also have the total number of how many people rated as extremely important or less extremely important for every other levels as well. In that case, we can get a percentage of overall how people rated 7, 6, or others. And then we can use this percentage, multiply each country's total people being interviewed. That would give us, based on overall proportion, how many people we would expect from each country give us different levels answer. That's how we can have them work out. For sure, we need to pay attention on the dollar sign. So in that case, we can use Excel power to have all the table settled. Since they all have similar format, we do the auto filling and continue doing the auto filling, we would have all of them settled. And then we can just simply calculate each cell, the square difference between observed frequency and expected frequency, then divide by expected frequency. Again, we can auto fill all the values. Then we only need to add them together with a give us chi-square test statistic value. And we have degree freedom from number of rows minus one multiply number of columns minus one. In that case, we can use chi-square distribution function. That would be L 20. There's a special function in Excel. We can use a chi-square test function. The first part, our actual observed frequency. And then the second part, our expected frequency. This will give us exactly same answer, p-value right away. If we give a little more space, we would see they are the same. With this kind of super small p-value, or we look at very big chi-square test statistic value, we would see overwhelmingly evidence to reject now hypothesis, strongly reject now hypothesis. That means we do not consider the country people are located would be independent to the opinion how important people think about their appearance. That means different area, different country, 
people hold different opinions about their appearance.